Hello, everyone, and welcome to Devotional Life with Paul and Jeannie. We are glad that you're here with us, as always, and we are moving our attention right along with this conversation between, well, it's really, well, I was going to say job offer. That's probably not, not the right terminology, but I guess we should say God is calling Moses as a deliverer, putting him to work. And Moses has gone through a whole list of excuses uh, excuses why he can't be used. I hope we're not doing that when the Lord calls us. But what happens next, Jeannie? Well, uh, first of all, backing up just a tiny bit, he was going with excuse number four, saying that, uh, you know, that just send somebody else. And we know that that angered the Lord because bottom line was Moses didn't want to do it. But then God was gracious and, and said, okay, your brother Aaron, he's prepared his brother Aaron, he's telling him, and uh, Aaron's going to come and uh, help you out. And in fact, he's on his way to come see you, <laughs> and he's got a gladness in his heart to come see you. And so that's that's where we left off. So um, Moses goes and he uh, tell gets permission from his father-in-law Jethro to go ahead and go on this journey back to Egypt. And Jethro blesses him, and Moses brings his wife and his boys, and they're either on the journey or about ready to leave. And then around the corner, here comes Aaron. It's amazing how the Lord has really orchestrated all of this, covered all the bases, do exactly what Moses would say, of course. Uh, but, well... Uh, What's your thinking there? On how does the Lord has to get Aaron from Egypt uh, out to where Moses is, and I don't know that he knows where he's at. Yeah, without cell phones and all that. Again, that amazes <laughs> me. The communication. So somehow, some traveler, um, like we talked about way long time ago, the Midianites came and traveled with their trade. Remember, to Egypt. That's how Joseph got there. <laughs> and so maybe there was traders that came and they they were able to bring word back to Aaron and his family. Hey, your brother's out there. It's been 40 years. Yeah, 40 years later. Yeah. So Moses wasn't expecting all of this after 40 years. <laughs> and uh, Aaron, I'm sure, was thought, you know, my brother's been gone 40 years. And who knows what kind of terms they left on. You know, Moses was running out of town and going to uh, the desert to run away for his life. And we don't yeah. know how that relationship with him and Aaron, did Aaron bless him and send him off or was he upset with him? And we don't really have the conversation between the Lord and Aaron or how the Lord laid that on Aaron's heart to go find Moses uh, to come back together. Well, now, it does say Exodus 4.27, our verses, And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God, and he kissed his brother. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. So he definitely spoke to Aaron somehow, maybe in an audible voice, just like he did with Moses. Who knows? But Aaron did hear from the Lord, mm -hmm. his assignment. Yeah. And maybe even there was some, you know, patching up in his heart that the Lord did between Aaron and Moses, you know, the whole time when Moses first laughed. And... Yeah, I think so, because uh, the Lord seems to throw in and comfort to prepare Moses, and look, your brother's coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, Moses might have thought, oh, my brother's coming out to see me. What's that going to be like, you know? Yeah. Like Jacob, when he ran into his brother later, remember, he was afraid because yes. they parted in bad terms. So now he's telling him he's going to be glad in his heart to see you. So that must have comforted Moses and gave him an expectation that his yeah. brother was going to be happy to see him. As well as an extra assurance, because I'm sure Aaron said, the Lord sent me out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah. Moses didn't have to think twice about whether Aaron would take the assignment because yeah. it was all set up. Yes. God had prepared his heart. Yeah, to be somebody as a mouthpiece for Moses. Right. So don't be surprised then when God lays somebody on your heart to go talk to or to pray for or 
you know, whatever the case may be, somebody can pop into your mind and you go, well, I need to connect with them and see how they're doing. You know, because the Lord is continually working behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes in every part of our lives. That is so much fun. I wish sometimes we could pull the curtain back and see what's yeah. going on behind the scenes. Like <clears throat> you mentioned someone, and <clears throat> I had had somebody on my heart for a couple of days. And I kept saying, oh, we need to call her. We need to call her. And then I just, it didn't work out with the right times to call her because I thought, oh, she's at work now or whatever. And then on the third day of having that, she called us. And, yeah. uh, you know, so we know that the Lord was working on us to connect with her. Yes. And then when it was time for her, she connected with us. So, yeah, because as God's preparing you to do something or go somewhere or speak to someone, he's also preparing that person's heart to connect with you. Yes. Like maybe even a witnessing opportunity and you're thinking, oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. And then you get to talk to them and you find out God's been working on their heart. God has been working on well, their Well, we'd like to use that term divine appointment. Right. Okay, so uh, when... Aaron and Moses came together there in the wilderness. That was a divine appointment. For yes. sure it was. Yes. But why can't we have, or aren't we having, or shouldn't we be or not recognizing expecting, them. yes, divine appointments? Right. And when they happen, they're so much fun. Yes. And usually you look back at it afterwards and you see how all the pieces came together. So don't hesitate when you feel like God's telling you to do something, call somebody, witness to somebody, if it's on your heart. And I know for me, I kind of get this little sense of like this weight on my chest a little uh -huh. bit. Do you ever feel that way? Like this is just an impression uh, on my yeah. on my heart, <laughs> you know, even though your heart itself is just pumping blood. But, it, you know, that terminology that... I do. I feel like this little pressure on my on my chest that I need to do this, you know. I guess for me, I feel like I've got something in my in basket, <laughs> and I've got to take care of that. It's just sitting there. It's yeah, sitting there waiting for me to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's so much fun to be on a journey with the Lord. Yes. So sure Moses is. and his brother are having a good family reunion. So I think that's pretty fun. Yeah. All right. Well. Get ready. Who knows what thing the Lord may have for you to say or do today. Or who and you're he, supposed to meet, run into or meet. Yeah, and he's or, working on their heart and working on your heart at the same time. And maybe even a family member. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today and for loving us and giving us this time together and just making us realize that the things that happen in our life are not necessarily random but planned by you. So bring on, Father, those divine appointments that we can see your hand working in our lives and in the lives of others. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this time. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. See you soon.